Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. And this is in my series, the Bordeaux Basic Series. This is my next video on the fourth growth wines of the 1855 classification system. Fourth growth, small group, so easy to talk about. There's only 10 fourth growth wines. And as a group collectively, I think it provides fairly decent value. They're not really expensive. And so I would say if you're kind of exploring the growth wines and Bordeaux wines, um, this is a good place to start, the fourth growth uh, region. You've got some pretty decent wines that are um, well priced. So let's go through them. Again, if you've watched my uh, other videos, the 1855 classification system was always based on the price per value that each wine obtained per barrel at that time. And I guess you can equate that to quality, but it's not exact correlation to quality. It had to do with reputation also. So you can say the most um, sought after wines. And even within the um, each of the five growth uh, levels, there was a hierarchy. So it went from the top to the bottom. So we're going to start there. The top wine in the fourth growth um, system or the hierarchy is St. Pierre. So this wine is from the um, Saint-Julien region and I'm going to close up uh, later on on all these bottles. Saint-Pierre um, Saint actually for me is a very fairly austere wine but recently they've been making some great wines and so I think um, this is one of these wines that I keep my eye on. The last couple of vintages have been enough for me to say, whoa, maybe I need to take a little look at this wine. So I would keep my eye on this wine. Um, historically, I haven't really thought it was that good. Um, probably it is at the fourth growth level, uh, but definitely the last couple of years has really come up and, and I think meets that level. Next wine is Talbo. Talbo, again, to me, and then St. Julian, very similar in my um, kind of, in my own opinion, with St. Pierre. I would say historically, if I had to choose, I think I would choose Talbo over St. Pierre. But let's say in the most recent, which is now, modern age, I actually might prefer St. Pierre at this point. It's a little less known than Talbo, so it might, you get, it might get a little bit of pricing. Um, uh, uh, reduction and I think they are actually making um, slightly better wines than Talbot at this time. So good wine, again worthy of fourth growth status, I don't think there's a problem there. The next wine is uh, Chateau Brenner uh, de Cru. It used to be called, uh, in the 1855 classification system, it, called, it was called uh, de Luc, du Luc and so um, they actually say that on the bottle, you'll see that later on, it says Deluc de Cru. It's actually called Bernier, um, de, uh, sorry, Bernier de Cru. If we were gonna reclassify today, this would probably be uh, more at this end um, than at the top end of the um, fourth growths. And there are actually, I think, many fifth growths that might be a little bit higher performing than um, Bernier de Cru. Um, having said that, most fourth growth wines, as you'll I'll go through this, I think are performing at that level. Next wine is a, probably a wine that many people are familiar with. This is uh, Chateau du Hart Milan. So because it's got the Domain Baron de Rothschild Lafitte um, association and it looks like Lafitte, the prices of this wine have skyrocketed. I'm not saying this is not a fourth growth wine, it is, but I think the price has gone ahead of itself, mostly because of its association and its resemblance to Lafitte wines. So people can't drink Lafitte, so they think, well, do Hart Milan is about the same. It is from the Poyac region, so um, I think that's why you know people think, well, it's the same thing. It looks a lot like Lafitte, it's from the Lafitte family, so uh, you know there's a lot of uh, circumstances, it's a lot cheaper, obviously, than Lafitte but it's quite expensive the last couple of years. So I think it's a little bit, although the quality I think is at the fourth growth level, um, maybe even higher, um, it's pretty pricey for a fourth growth and a little bit overpriced for the value at this point. The next uh, wine is a wine that I don't have, but I've had called Chateau Peugeot. Um, 
and Puget, Puget, Peugeot. Um, it's from the Cantonet Margot region, and uh, it was okay. It was mediocre. Um, and again, this my, my comment about Margot region, um, probably in the fourth growth region, is probably um, not. It doesn't have the renaissance that I'm seeing in the second and third growth Margot wines. Um, it was. Um, so ordinary that I actually didn't even keep the bottle. So I'm not sure if it would keep for status um, in, in today's kind of um, thinking. The only thing great about Peugeot is that it is probably the um, least pricey of all the fourth growth wines. So, I mean, I think it's under a hundred bucks usually. So, um, but again, um, it's more for people that are chasing uh, growth wines, it's okay. It's it's an okay wine, but I think you can do a lot better with um, some even fifth growth wines. Okay, next wine is La Tour Carnet. Again, another in the um, similar vein of um, a Puget. Um, it is from the Omidon region, and um, label is okay. It's it's drinkable, it's okay. Uh, it's not that expensive, so I guess if you like fourth growth wines, you wanna impress people with a fourth growth wine, it's good. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad wine, but there probably are um, better choices in the fourth growth um, region. The next one is a wine that I actually really love, and in, and this is an older label, this is 89 um, La Femme Rocher, but I really like, and now the label is yellow, I really like this wine and uh, for beginners, I actually started off when I started drinking Bordeaux, this was one of the wines I really loved. It wasn't that um, expensive and it's still not that expensive compared to some of the other wines. It's a really good quality wine, uh, fairly easy to understand, doesn't need a lot of aging to, to perform very well, drinks well for many years and gives you um, a lot of pleasurable characteristics of Bordeaux. So it comes from a St. Estefe region. Um, I actually really like this wine. So um, I think it's a fourth growth wine. It might be slightly, uh, it doesn't really change as much. I don't think it's really um, increased in terms of its quality over the last, since I drank it over the last 20 years, but great wine. Um, again, not that expensive. So I really like this. The sleeper, the next wine is the sleeper in this whole, um, uh, I guess hi uh, hierarchy or this level is Becheville. And Becheville is um, it's from the St. Julian region and I would say um, it's always been pretty good but the last couple of years has been just incredible. This wine is incredible. I was fortunate enough to go visit them and man their facility now is um, top notch like unbelievable. Uh, so they're making some tremendous wines and I think there's real value here. Um, I would, in my mind, in my personal opinion, I think this is the best um, fourth growth wine. Probably, uh, it's getting expensive. People are recognizing that. Um, probably better than most third growth wines. Um, so it probably is at the top tier of the third growth wines even. Uh, so it's a really good wine. It's gonna continue to get better. Um, I really am hot on this wine, um, Becheville. And then after that, there's another wine called Prier Lachine from um, the Cantonet Margot region. Again, good wine, decent, uh, maybe can keep fourth growth or a little bit lower. There's better choices out there. Decent again, um, not that expensive. It's okay. Um, and then the last wine again, another Margot wine called Marquise de Terme. Again, um, the label is kind of pretty um, decent. It's not that uh, terrific, the label. The wine is the same. Um, it's okay, and um, I'm not sure if it would keep the status. Here is the close-up of each bottle. And these are older bottles. So that's St. Pierre, which is a, just a beautiful label from St. Julien. Next one is Taubeau, which is a little bit plain. And I keep some of these, these are the great vintages, 86 and 96 are some of my favorite vintages. This is uh, Brenner de Cru, which is called De Luc when it was uh, classified. And 99 again was a great vintage. Bottle is a little bit um, not that attractive. 
then do Art Milan and you can understand the association with Lafitte. It says it is a Lafitte winery. 95 was a great vintage for this wine. And then there is um, a bottle missing. That's going to be Puget, which I might try to have a picture of. And then this is the Tour Carnet. Pretty uh, boring label, I would say. Then one of my favorite wines, La Fond Rocher. This is 89. Again, they've changed their label now. It's a yellow label, which is really attractive. Then Bechevel. Beautiful with uh, the boat. Love their story. Then we're missing a wine, which is Pierre Le Chien in here. A label, which Pierre Le Chien's label is actually quite nice. And then Marquise de Term, which is... Um, another Margot wine. So let's uh, give an overview, uh, summary of my kind of findings. My top pick from the fourth growth, in my personal opinion, I'd love to hear other people's opinion, is Becheville for sure. Followed by um, probably Duhart Milan, which is also spectacular. These are definitely performing at fourth growth level, if not higher. Um, then next in my list would probably be, be um, La Fon Rocher and also um, probably Talbo and St. Pierre probably interchangeably and then the rest of them are kind of lumped into well they may be lucky to keep their status. Now we come to the fun part where um, I'm gonna let subscribers in a poll in my community section choose the wine that I'm gonna try and I'm kind of excited to try all these wines um, to just renew my um, appreciation of them. The good news about fourth growth is they're, because they're fourth growth, they're normally pretty much in stock. They're always available and the pricing is pretty reasonable. So I'm gonna go through the pricing so you know what the pricing is for each one so that you know. Um, so again, there's the, the top end wine would be Duhart Milan. In, in our liquor stores is $175. Becheville is actually $200, but Again, um, I think that's correct because I think Becherville, the, the uh, quality is quite good. Then we go down to St. Pierre, which is $145. This is all 2018 vintages, so we can compare. Um, Bernard de Cru is going to be $125 here. La Rocher is $110, which is still expensive compared to when I bought it uh, many years ago. I, I remember buying it at $40 and thinking it was a great deal. And then um, I guess Marquis the term is also $110. And then Puget, Puget, which is the one I don't have, is 90 bucks. So 90 bucks for a fourth growth wine in Canada in BC liquor stores is a pretty good price. So anyways, I'm gonna have a poll and um, let you kind of choose wines. I think we are only allowed five choices in polls. So we're probably going to go with St. Pierre, which actually I already have in my cellar. Um, maybe uh, Duhart Milan, um, La Fon Rocher, Becheville, and we'll throw in one of the other ones. Uh, maybe we'll throw in uh, Bernard de Cou. We'll throw in one of the other ones. Maybe we'll just we'll use those four because those are the four most interesting wines that I'd love to drink again. Until next time, happy drinking.